The Rapture Puzzle, Putting the Scriptural Pieces Together, Day of Atonement, 2015, September 23rd or 24th, 2015, Judgment Day. Chapter 13, Puzzle Pieces 31, 32, and 33, The Two Witnesses, the 144,000, and the New Jerusalem. The book of Revelation is full of symbolism. We see dragons and beasts with ten heads and seven horns, a woman who is given eagle's wings. We see a sword coming out of Jesus' mouth, two witnesses breathing fire out of their mouths, a hundred and forty-four thousand virgins standing with a lamb on Mount Zion. Most people who have read the book of Revelation understand that these things are symbolic, and that they represent something other than the literal interpretation of what is being read. Most people understand that there will not actually be a beast come out of the sea with ten heads and seven horns. But for some reason, when it comes to the two witnesses in Revelation 11, or the 144,000 mentioned in Revelation 7 and 14, many believers cannot see or understand that these are also symbolic. Many believers are very confused when they read the book of Revelation. For example, in Revelation 21, we see the New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven, and the New Jerusalem is referred to as the wife of the Lamb. Many believers know that the bride of Christ is the church, but are confused by this passage that says the bride is a city. I would like to look at some of these difficult passages and do my best to explain them from my own understanding. I do not claim to understand everything written in the book of Revelation, and will admit right now that my interpretation may not be correct. Only the Lord has full knowledge of what all of the symbolism represents. We must allow Scripture to interpret Scripture and try to understand these difficult passages. We need to stop trying to fit God into our little box, continually insisting that everything we read in the book of Revelation is literal and not symbolic, and that to think otherwise is heresy. This is the same attitude that the Pharisees had, and was why they were unable to see the Messiah for who he was when he first came to the earth. Their legalistic, narrow-minded interpretations of the scriptures did not fit with what Jesus was doing and who he was claiming to be, and they could not see that he was the fulfillment of the prophecies. The entire Bible is full of symbolism, especially in the prophecies. Jesus loved to speak to people in parables. These parables were stories that had deeper meaning, and the people and things in his parables represented something. Jesus, the Word of God, is an incredible storyteller, and the written Word of God is His story to us, and it's full of symbolism and parables. God is the most amazing storyteller of all time, and this book that He wrote is the world's greatest story. It's His story. Okay, so let's first take a look at these two witnesses in Revelation and allow the Scripture to interpret itself. Revelation 11 says, I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshippers, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for forty-two months, and I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for one thousand two hundred sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees, and the two lampstands, and they stand before the Lord of the earth. This is a very clear reference to Zechariah chapter 4. The angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. He asked me, What do you see? I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand, with a bowl at the top, and seven lamps on it, with seven channels to the lamps. Also. There are two olive trees by it, one on the right of the bowl, and the other on its left. Then I asked the angel, What are these two olive trees on the right and the left of the lampstand? Again I asked him, What are these two olive branches beside the two gold pipes that pour out golden oil? He replied, Do you not know what these are? No, my lord, I said. So he said, these are the two who are anointed to serve the Lord of all the earth. 
So these two lampstands and two olive trees stand before the Lord of the earth and are anointed to serve him. And what does the scripture teach us is the lampstand and the olive tree? In Revelation chapter 1 we read, I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and of the seven golden lampstands, is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not consider yourself to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, Branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief. And you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree. So Jesus himself tells us that the lampstand represents the church, and Paul tells us that the olive tree represents those who believe in Christ, both Jewish and Gentile believers. Paul tells us that the Lord cut off those in Israel who did not accept the Messiah, and he has grafted in those Gentiles who do believe. Therefore, the olive tree also represents the church, both Jewish and Gentile believers. So why are there two olive trees and two lampstands? My thought on this is that one lampstand represents the Jewish believers in the Messiah, and the other represents the Gentile believers in the Messiah. Likewise, one olive tree represents the Jewish believers in the Messiah, and the other represents the Gentile believers in the Messiah. Jesus is the head of the church, and we are his body, but every body has two arms and two legs, two hands and two feet. The two olive trees and the two lampstands represent the whole body of Christ, both Jewish and Gentile. Revelation 11 tells us that these two witnesses will be clothed in sackcloth. In the scriptures, sackcloth represents repentance. Someone wanting to show his repentant heart would often wear sackcloth, sit in ashes, and put ashes on top of his head. Esther chapter 4 verse 3 tells us that in every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. 
the jews responded to the devastating news concerning their race with sackcloth and ashes showing their intense grief and distress sackcloth and ashes were also used as a public sign of repentance and humility before god when jonah declared to the people of nineveh that god was going to destroy them for their wickedness every one from the king on down responded with repentance fasting and sackcloth and ashes they even put sackcloth and their animals their reasoning was who knows god may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish this is interesting because the bible never says that jonah's message included any mention of god's mercy but mercy is what they received it's clear that the ninevites donning of sackcloth and ashes was not a meaningless show god saw genuine change a humble change of heart represented by the sackcloth and ashes and it caused him to relent and not bring about his plan to destroy them